Thank you for joining us on NCA Nationwide. I'm Naja Atutichani. The leader of the proscribed Islamic movement in Nigeria, Sheikh El Zazeki, and his wife Zinat, have returned to Nigeria on board an Ethiopian airliner at about 11.45 Friday morning. Let's join Emmanuel Ayimiro, who was at the Namdi Azikwe International Airport, Abuja, when the plane landed to tell us what transpired. Journalists waited in vain at the arrival exit of the Namdi Azikwe International Airport, Abuja, to catch a glimpse of the IMN leader, Ibrahim Ezak Zakia, his wife Zenat, who returned from India. A rebel source told NTA that security operatives weeks away the IMN leader. Now that he's back in Abuja, it is not clear whether he's back to continue with his treatment or to face his trials. El Zakzaki departed for India on Monday this week but could not proceed with the medical treatment after an audio message said to have come for him saying he does not wish to continue with the treatment in India. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. Meanwhile, it was another busy day for President Muhammadu Buhari in Daura, Katsuna State, as Nigerians from all walks of life converged on his country home in demonstration of support for nation building. The latest visit was the President of the Senate, Ahmed Ibrahim Lawan, who reassured the Nigerian leader of genuine commitment by the National Assembly to support his efforts at bequeathing a worthy legacy for generations yet unborn. State House correspondent Adam Musambo has details. Just returning from the journey of faith to Saudi Arabia, the spiritually reawakened President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, was accompanied to Daura by principal officers of the Senate across party lines. The mission of the Senate leadership here is not only to pay deference respect to the President, but also to renew its loyalty and commitment to him and indeed Nigeria. Issues critical to peace, unity and prosperity of the country were discussed between the president and his guests during the closed-door engagement that lasted about one hour. The highly elated President Buhari was seen exchanging light teasing repartee with the lawmakers as they depart for Abuja. I will not smile. <laughs> Speaking to newsmen on the visit, Senate President Ahmed Lawan was emphatic that the Ninth Senate is irrevocably committed to the promising vision and mission of President Buhari for sustainable future of the country. We have renewed that commitment, to Mr. President, that we are going to remain committed and focused on what we should be doing to ensure that Nigerians get a very uh, good and better deal, really, uh, in the current dispensation. So we are already primed uh, and waiting for the next line of action, which is going to be on the budget uh, 2020, which uh, uh, we believe that the executive will work so hard to present to, to the National Assembly uh, at the end of September. And then we are promised that we'll do everything and anything possible to ensure that we pass it uh, before we go on Christmas break by the grace of God. Before going on annual recess, the Senate screened and confirmed all the nominees of the president for ministerial positions and NTA News sought to know the Senate president's impression on their capacity to drive the next level agenda. These people are people of great experience, of a great deal of patriotism and, and commitment. They have shown capacity, uh, all of them. And in fact, one thing that was even more encouraging was the, the capacity exhibited by the ladies nominated, I think seven of them. So we are looking forward uh, with excitement 
to working with them. Uh, we are going to be very uh, strict with our oversight. Uh, we, we intend to make it so, so that uh, everybody is on his toes to perform. Mr. President will be living by the grace of God at the end of this tenure in 2023. Mr. President has expressed his desire to leave legacies. We are on, with him on this all the way. And the only way we can ensure that legacies are uh, left by Mr. President is to insist that whoever is given a responsibility performs that responsibility. So we are going to work with those ministers and any uh, head of uh, agency to ensure that uh, the, the policies of government, the legislation that we pass are implemented to the letter to ensure that we, we are able to achieve those things. Laudable and noble uh, programs and projects of the federal government of Nigeria. More Nigerians continue to pay homage on the president. From Daura Adamusambu, NTA News. And from Daura, we look at diplomatic ties where the Nigeria film industry has continued to attract international attention with Latin America becoming the new frontier following the signing of a memorandum of understanding between Nigeria and Argentina to collaborate in film production. Argentina's interest in Nigerian films is said to be triggered by the role of a Nigerian slave in actualizing its independence. Ungozi Silva Technico tells us more. This endorsement by the Nigerian partners in the Memorandum of Understanding clears the coast for a prominent Argentina film producer, Cesar Pablo, to bring his expertise to bear in explaining to the world through film production the contribution of a female slave from Nigeria to the independence of Argentina over 200 years ago. The co-producer and financier of the film project, Mohamed Hayatu Ahmed, Maria Remedio's Del Varch role is similar to other Nigerian women like the legendary Queen Amina, whose bravery contributed to the liberation of the black race and now Argentina cannot be forgotten in a hurry. 200 years ago, in the 18th century, a uh, woman was captured here from Lagos and uh, was sailed to South America, precisely Argentina. So she played a key role in gaining Argentinian independence. But unfortunately, history was rewritten and that part of it was not carried along. That's why we decided to make it a 60-40 participation. This collaboration is intended to foster bicultural exchange and checked professionalism in Nigerian film production with some parts of the film shot in Nigeria. Nigeria never produced any Oscar award winning movie. This kind of collaboration will help to bring Nigeria enterprise in the area of motion picture to the front burner where it rightly deserves. The MOU between Nigeria and Argentina is also expected to strengthen cooperations in trade and investment between the two nations. In Abuja, Ngozi Silva Technical, NTA News. And speaking of cultural ties, transborder travels with poor, effective, with poor transportation and communication systems, religious missionaries and expeditions of the olden days were responsible for the separation of families, relatives and friends who for circumstances beyond their control settled in countries or towns other than theirs. This was played out when the Gambian High Commissioner to Nigeria, Amadou Sheikh Umar Tal, traced his long separated relatives to El Lema district in Hatleja Emirate of Jigawa State, where he celebrated the just concluded Eid al Kabir with them. Mohammed Musa Askira completes the report. History books show that Sheikh Umaru al Futi, the founder of Tekolo Empire, the spiritual and military commander of Tijania sect in what is now known as Guinea, Senegal, Gambia, and Mali, left Futu Toro in Senegal for expedition across West African sub region in the early years of the 20th century. Yeliman town in Hadeje Emirate of Jigawa State in Nigeria was one of the places he visited where he left his grandsons and daughters. Those left behind were the great-grandfathers of the present Sarki of Yeliman, Sardona Habib Tal, who is also the Khalifa of Sheikh Umar al-Futi. 
In a surprising move to reunite the two separated families by distance, the Gambian High Commissioner to Nigeria, Amadou Sheikh Umatal, traveled to Jigawa State to spend the Edil Kabir celebration break with his Gambian relatives based in Nigeria. While at the Yaliman town, the High Commissioner, Amadou Sheikh Umatal, was accompanied by the Khalifa, Sardona Habib Tal, to pay a homage on the Emir of Hadeja, Al Haja Damu Abu Bakar Maji, where he thanked the Emir and the people of Hadeja for accommodating his relatives and treat them in no different way as their own people. Since independence, we have been working very closely, and Nigeria, being the big brother, has actually helped the Gambia a lot over the years, I mean, through technical assistance and so on. So we are very much grateful to the government of Nigeria. The Sarki of Yaliman, Sardona Habib Tal, who took time to explain the long-standing relationship, described Nigeria and Gambia as one country separated by distance, as two countries have many things in common. The reunited brothers agreed to sustain the rekindled brotherhood prompted by the visit of the High Commissioner. From Dutse, Muhammad Musa Skira, NT News. And on the security front, President Muhammad Bahari has urged state governments to be more proactive in securing the lives and property of their people. This, he said, is necessary towards complementing his administration's genuine efforts at tackling acts of criminality for peace and prosperity. The president stated this at an audience with the governors of Kanu, Kazuna and Zamfara states in Daura. State House correspondent Adam Musambu reports that the president also inaugurated more road projects executed by the Masari administration. Before the closed-door engagement with the governors, President Muhammad Buhari interacted with the service chiefs led by the Chief of Defense Staff, General Gabriel Abayomi Oloni Shakin. Details of their discussions were not made public, and efforts to hear from any of them were unsuccessful. At the meeting with the governors, the president harped on the need for sustained efforts at achieving peace and security, which he described as prerequisites for any meaningful development. His administration, he said, is committed towards protecting the lives of Nigerians and setting the country on the path of peace and prosperity, saying, however, that this can only be achieved if the governors key into the various national security initiatives. The governors who used the opportunity to brief the president on the security situation in their states and the way forward told newsmen that the meeting was fruitful. Everybody in Nigeria is happy with what we are doing. Before you cannot pass through JBR or on the motor road, now we have opened the road. As a human being, first of all, you have to be trustworthy, you have to be direct, and don't deceive. So we engage these people and we engage them fairly, and they accepted all the offers we offered to them. As I told everybody, we did not give them money or anything. All the people they released to us is unconditional, without paying any ransom. And we see they even released a foreign national from Korea, without paying a single couple. And before I came, he was there about seven months under captivity. So Zampura is calm now and is peaceful. So we thank God for that. So I brief him that uh, now we have uh, achieved a lot of success and uh, he promised me to do more about security in the state. Kano is peaceful, Kano has been peaceful. I think he's one of the, the most peaceful states in the Federation. So I also briefed him how we coordinated the security agencies in Kano and also how we involved the community participation, especially the new Emirates that we created that actively involved in keeping peace and stability in the state. So what did he tell you? He is very grateful, he is happy with the situation, and he has given me every encouragement to continue maintaining peace and stability in Kano. In the meantime, President Muhammad Buhari has defied the early morning downpour to inaugurate two more roads projects constructed by Katsina State Government under the restoration agenda of the Masari administration. The roads were the 38-kilometer Sapke the Naunai Ruankaya Road linking 20 agrarian communities in Dutsi and marshy local government areas, as well as Fago, Kasayal, Kwasarawa, Jirdede, Koza Road, connecting four council areas of Katsina State. Katsina is an agrarian state. We entirely depend on agriculture and our markets. 
So our intention is to open up uh, farming communities, access to markets, so that the mobility and the cost of products will be affordable to the consumers as well as beneficial to the farmers. The governor said 44 other road projects are at various stages of completion. From Katsina, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. And from Katsina, we head to Ogun State, where the federal government is working on necessary regulations to further encourage public-private partnership and power distribution in Nigeria. Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju stated this at the official inauguration of the new Abeokuta 260 megawatts, 132 by 33 kVA substations in Abeokuta. Adeni Itaiwo was there for NTA News. An increasing human population that requires steady energy supply for both domestic and industrial needs, Abeokuta Dogun State Capital and its environs require much more than what the lower circuit 2 by 40 MBA 33 KVA from Otapa substation currently offers. For the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, taking delivery of the new 2 by 60 MBA 33 KVA substation built under the NIPP scheme is a necessary reinforcement to improve power supply to Abeokuta consumers. Professor Oshimbaju highlights the need for existing distribution companies to inject more resources while government works on creating proper framework for more private energy distributors to open up the market. As a beneficiary of the power project, Ogun State and indeed other states in the country can assist in solving the electricity challenge if there are legal framework spelling out roles of states and local government in the power sector. We must all realize that this project will not only improve the economic activities of their communities and environs, but go a long way in the successful implementation of our joint agenda of building a future together. Stakeholders in the sector and traditional rulers in Ogun State say the new power station holds a lot of potentials for social economic development in the area. Nigeria currently has about 8,342 megawatt generated capacity with less than 4,000 megawatt distributed. In Abelkuta, Adeni Taiwo, NTA News. Similarly, the federal government has restated its commitment to creating jobs for youth through and one million youths through the NPOWER program. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbaju stated this at the official flag of ceremony of the Ogun State Job Portal in Abeokuta. Correspondent Lukman Adefeso reports. The job portal, which plans to have a database of all unemployed youths in the state, is part of efforts towards employment generation in the state. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, applauded the initiative and assured that the federal government will collaborate with Ogun State to realize its dream. He encouraged the youth to take advantage of the opportunity as well as exploit the potentials in agro-allied farming. We had 12 million youths. We were able to employ only 500,000, half a million. And we are going to do an additional number so that we are, in the end, we will be able to employ at least a million to start. And as we go on, we will be able to engage them. But what we are doing today with the agro life farming sectors will make you realize that being a farmer and an agro allied the Ogun State Governor, Prince Dakwa Biodun, remarked that the launch of the job portal is part of his promise to create jobs for the youths. I'm very delighted to inform you that at the launch of the state job portal today, instant jobs will already be offered to some of the applicants. This is a further testimony that our institution will leave no stone unturned to work on and engage our team youths for profitable employment. For me, I know that the multiply effects of this will create new lead of millionaires from the employment of talents. 20 local youths got automatic employment in the pilot scheme. 
And now we head over to Plateau State, where Governor Simon Bagolalong says his recent visit to the United States of America afforded him the opportunity to meet with investors in the agricultural sector with a view to improving farming using modern technology in the state. The governor spoke with journalists at the Namdi Azikwe International Airport, Abuja, shortly after returning from Minnesota, where he attended the 2019 Convention of of Zomunta Association, as well as an agricultural show. He says the event provided him the platform as chairman of the Northern Governors Forum to explain the investment potentials of the country, particularly in the northern region, as well as assuring them of the efforts being put in place to address some of the challenges facing the region. What we do is that uh, it's good to keep in touch with our people uh, in diaspora. Because they have wonderful ideas, sometimes bringing the ideas home are always the problem. And this time there's a link in communication. So with this aspect, we are able to sell back the north, and they also sold to us what they can do. What they can do. Uh, I represented not only my state but the whole north. So I told them the opportunities that are available in all the 19 northern states. So each of them has a link now, and uh, they are doing their best to bring in uh, business to all the northern states. He said the investors will be in Plateau State soon to sign agreements in providing input to small and medium-scale enterprises as part of the human capital development of his rescue administration. And now let's join Jennifer in Lagos for more reports. Thank you, Najatu, and welcome to Lagos. Now, if the African continent is to benefit from the Belt and Road Initiative by China, there is urgent need for African nations to formulate development plans that will provide maximal mobilization of domestic resources for infrastructural growth. These were submissions of speakers at a roundtable in Lagos. Ken Egbeluge reports. The roundtable discussion organized by the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs had scholars and policymakers in attendance. The aim is to brainstorm on the Belt and Road Initiative and Africa, problems and prospects to the recipient countries' indebtedness to China. Speakers agree that China provides infrastructure funding to developing economies under long terms. This, they say, could lead to the recipient countries' indebtedness to China. Africa must hold China on their promises and be able to get the best of it. For instance, China has promised to advance industrial capacity cooperation along with the implementation of the Belt and Road Initiative in line with the AU's Agenda 2063. Critics of the initiative are of the opinion that the time has come for the African continent to develop its own infrastructure and reduce over-dependence on external funding. Even at domestic level, most African states have not been able to get their acts together. Fight corruption so that we strengthen our institutions, we provide technical know-how to our own people so that to kick up this particular massive technical invasion as well as infrastructure development that tomorrow we can build other cities not only in Africa. Belt and Road Initiative is China's signature vision for reshaping its global engagement. It was launched in 2014. 65 countries, including 20 from Africa, have so far signed on to the program. In Lagos, Ken Igbeluge, NTA News. Now, towards optimal use, utilization of the nation's waterways, the National Inland Waterways Authority has entered into an agreement aimed at fully exploiting its potential for national economic growth. Dr. Oguyemi reports that the focus of stakeholders is bridging the infrastructural gap in the shortest possible time. With 10,000 kilometers of inland waterways, Nigeria has the second longest length of waterways in Africa, accessible by 28 out of the 36 states of the Federation. Out of the 10,000, only 3,800 kilometers is navigable seasonally, a challenge that is now being tackled with dredging of channels and infrastructural development. The recent signing of an MOU 
between Niwa and Nexin Bank in May this year has begun yielding results, providing an effective alternative to the road to move export commodities and passengers. It's time to gain hundreds of millions of dollars from the inland waterways network in terms of export. Nexin Bank wants to export. We do not have the necessary resources to invest in the infrastructure that is necessary to develop, to develop the economy. So we have come together and said, okay, we will allow you to invest in the infrastructure that we genuinely need while you must comply with the standards that is being set by Inland Waterways. Stakeholders are optimistic of actualizing the congestion of Lagos ports if Inland Waterways is properly harnessed. Uh, by October, November, the link to Tinkan and Apapa by rail will become realistic. You have seen barges also, you know, participating using the inland waterways and the train. Train is now lifting uh, or taking containers from Lagos up to Kaduna, a dry port. So when completed, the project will reduce the cost of moving cargo and increase maritime and trade activities in Lagos. Dotson, Okuyemi, NTA News. And the Lagos State Government will provide operational and logistic support for the successful hosting of the 2019 Badagri Diaspora Festival. The State Governor, Babajide Sonwolu, made the pledge when the Chairman of the Nigerian Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabire Erewa, visited him to solicit his support as the chief host of the festival. Osula reports. The governor said it is heartwarming that there were still people who have passion and believe in the national heritage, adding that the festival would open Badagri corridors to tourism. It's the beginning of uh, something that will make the whole bigger, right? And it fits into part of our own team agenda, which were mentioned that entertainment and tourism is one of the cardinal economic drivers that we see taking the to the next level. The chairman of the Nigerian Diaspora Commission said that the 2019 festival would mark 400 years of the history of slave trade in Africa. Dabiri Erewa added that the festival would showcase Africa to the world in good light and on a positive note. So now from the point of no return, we open what you have the door of return. So you were taken away from the point of no return and now the Dabiri Lagos, Nigeria, welcomes you to a door of return. Your Excellency has been one of the most emotional things for anybody to get as a It's a spiritual connection, it's a physical connection, it's an emotional connection as well as um, a spiritual connection. They call me with tears. The festival tagged Door of Return is slated to hold sometime in October in Lagos, Nosa, Osula. NTA News. That's a contribution from Lagos. Nationwide continues after the commercial break. Protocol and event management are special skills which can only be acquired through training and experience. NTA TV College Jaws is organizing a special two-week course on protocol, event management, and public relations to upgrade the capacities of practitioners. The course will equip participants with modern skills, techniques, and international best practices in protocol, event management, and public relations. Also, a special four-week intensive course on non-linear editing techniques will run concurrently. The course will expose participants to modern techniques and technologies of non-linear editing. Take advantage of this course to hone your professional skills for premium packaging of your programs and reports. The venue for both courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA Television College, near Old Government House, Rayfield, George, Plateau State. Date 19th to 30th August 2019 for the course on protocol, event management and public relations. 19th August to 13th September 2019 for basic non-linear editing techniques. Course fee, 100,000 Naira only per participant. Accommodation inclusive. For more information, please call 0803-314-4383 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College, JAWS. Training you to be the best you want to be. The Nigerian national flag is a sacred national symbol. It is a mark of patriotism and a show of love for our nation to fly the national flag correctly, in the right colors, right dimension, and in the right sizes for each occasion. 
In recent times, it has been noticed that government offices, corporate organizations, banks, embassies, and other notable institutions fly faded, shredded, and haggard-looking versions of the national flag. This is rank and must stop. It has also been noticed that some citizens prefer to popularize the national flag of other nations. Fellow countrymen and women, let us be patriotic. Come let us show love for our motherland. Fly the correct versions of our national flag in all relevant places. Be patriotic. Be proud ambassadors of our great country. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. Get the latest news and updates from across Nigeria on NTA Nationwide. NTA Nationwide, weekdays by 4 p.m. Get it first, get it fresh. Thanks for staying with NTA Nationwide. Now, the federal government says it will appeal the judgment of the English court against Nigeria on the dispute that led to the arbitration between it and Process and Industrial Development Limited. In a statement by the Solicitor General of the Federation and Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Justice, Dayo Apata, counsels to the federal government have been instructed to seek the stay of execution of the judgment. Meanwhile, the federal government reaffirms its commitment to defending the interest of Nigeria in the matter by exploring every viable option. The dispute arose from a 20-year gas supply and processing agreement regarding accelerated gas development project. The statement affirmed that the process and industrial development limited never commenced the construction of the project facility, but alleges it incurred it incurred $40 million in its preliminary expenses. Daura in Katsina State is now one of the many communities to host an Air Force amenity, the Nigerian Air Force Reference Hospital, a modern facility with the latest medical technology. The report. It is one of the many sophisticated equipment at the NAF Reference Hospital, which will primarily cater to personnel in the front lines of the Northwest region. Members of the host community, like 24-year-old Olale Kong Moses, will also benefit from the medical services to be provided. And the mobility from town to this place is very cheap. From the main town to this place is 15 era. So the people around the, uh, the neighboring villages around here can be able to afford the transportation. Equipped the hospital with standard equipment. These include a cancer screening center, magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, and ECG centers, among many other treatment facilities. It's ideal for the care of critical patients, such as soldiers wounded in battle. In addition, this facility will be utilized as a teaching hospital for the training of our medical staff from the Nigerian Air Force School of Medical Sciences and Aviation Medicine. This is in line with the Nigerian Air Force value-added services and operations in Katsina and northwestern states, where the Nigerian Air Force is supporting ground troops to flush out kidnappers and bandits. 
The National Youth Service Corps, NYC, is working towards enhancing the productivity of its farms and garment factories to produce the quantity required by the scheme and even have surplus. The Director General of NYC, Brigadier General Shuaibu Ibrahim, stated this at a media parley with editors and bureau chiefs of media establishments in Abuja. Olainka Ujo reports that the Director General also noted that from 2019, Batch C, Date of birth will be on discharge certificates. Latest data from the NYC shows that since the establishment of the scheme for six years ago, 4,644,804 youths have participated in the national call to service. This number excludes those exempted on age or other reasons for exclusion. Now, the 18th Director General of the NYC is planning to consolidate on the gains of the scheme and is seeking media partnership to drive the entrepreneurial skills components being implemented in line with global dictates. This media party is setting the tone for what and where the NYC want to be. We are working vigorously to ensure that our ventures, especially the farms and garment factories, are more functional and able to produce reasonable quantities of products needed by the scheme. It was not a one-way traffic, however, as media chiefs probed provisions of security and welfare of core members, as well as the enrollment of unqualified persons for mobilization by some core producing institutions, age falsification, among other challenges. Again, the issue of fake core members, beyond uh, arrests and uh, prosecution, what measures uh, do we take uh, to prevent the entire uh, 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 fake situation. NYC is not a regulatory body, but however the act gave us the powers not to mobilize unqualified Nigerians. And I say the NYC under my watch will never, will never mobilize any unqualified Nigerians because they are not doing Nigeria any good. Other issues the NYC says it will deal with are presentation of fake medical papers for redeployment and relocation which will now be treated strictly based on marital, health, and security grounds. Olayin Kaoju, NTA News. Similarly, more groups are complementing federal government's employment generation and wealth creation drive by building the capacity of youths to encourage self-reliance. About 300 youths benefited from such a training by Pearl Growth Club in Port Harcourt, River State. 16-year-old Dakas Ubi is still in school, but already empowered to face challenges of life. She joins about 300 other teenagers that were trained in different skills by the Pale Growth Club to support government efforts at reducing youth unemployment. When we are done with secondary school, we don't go around looking for job opportunities, but rather we have to use the skills which we have been taught. I feel very happy and I'm grateful that I can be able to own the skill that will bring income for me. Convener of the training, Maureen Tamuno feels the task of job creation should not be left for government alone and therefore wants individuals, groups and organizations to contribute to their quota as well. Academically, they should excel and be graduates. And even as graduates, they should continue in that skill that they know how to do it to give additional money. You understand? And they should improve on the skill. The least possible way to prosper is by you receiving money from somebody and thinking you can just grow it by saving it. You must work with it. Certificates were presented to those that successfully passed the training, and it is expected that in the near future, dockers, printers, and others here will not only begin fully employed, but also employers of labor. Education managers have called for a robust investment in libraries to stimulate reading habits among Nigerians. They made the call on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria during a discussion on how to revive the declining reading culture, Olusheye Adiabo reports. Look at the new generation Nigerians that are making waves in reading and writing. Chino Amanda, as you have just rightly said, you will discover that these are people that are not based in Nigeria. So they have acquired that culture elsewhere. Why is it not possible for us to acquire it here? It's the neglect 
of the reading culture and the importance of reading. I know that in our generation growing up, you know, we had things like doing book reports in schools. And we had things like parents asking what you were reading. You know, but this time you don't have children reading. Guest on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria speaking on the country's poor reading culture. Their reaction was prompted by the World Culture Score Index, which puts Nigeria as one of the countries in the world with no written reading culture. The guest identified ill-equipped library and high cost of books as some of the factors for the country's poor reading culture. There is one state in the southeast. The last time they bought books was about 15 years ago. And we tried every effort to see the governor. It was rebuffed. We need the libraries. And if books are so expensive, then that's why the library is so important. We need to encourage the players in the book chain. To change the narrative, they recommended inculcating reading habits into children early in life. I want all stakeholders to take reading habits as a very critical factor in the development of Nigeria as a nation. And that is where the forums like the book festivals come in. Responses from NTA GMN Twitter Andrew also resonated with the contributions from the guests, with one of them by Mike Ayanko tweeting that reading culture emancipates human developments in all facets of endeavors. In Abuja, Ulushehe Adiagbo, NTA News. And there's a saying that readers are leaders. Now, Abubakar Mohammed is in our Medugri Network Center and has more reports. It's good to see you, Naja Atu, and thank you for joining us in Medugri. Borno State Governor Professor Babagana Umara Zulum has appealed to the Nigerian Military High Command to establish super camp in Gubio to ensure heavy military presence there. The governor made the call during a follow-up visit to the community in the wake of an attack on the headquarters of Gubio local government by Boko Haram insurgents. Mohamed Goni reports. Governor Babagana Omara's follow-up visit to Gubio town in northern Borno was to douse tension among the residents, resulting from speculation that the military base in the town was allegedly relocating to other places following attacks on its base. He stressed that the move by the military was only a change in strategy, adding that the soldiers have no plan to leave citizens to their faith. Professor Babagana Umara said the state government would procure additional 10 gun trucks for the military, apart from provision of other logistics to the soldiers, civilian JTF, and the vigilante. Governor Babagana Umara says Gubio town is strategic to restoration of peace and stability in the northern Borno senatorial district. We are now seeking for an assistance from the Nigerian military to immediately establish another super camp in Gubio. We are looking for deployment of more troops to Gubio, logistic support to Gubio, so that peace and tranquility shall prevail, shall prevail in this town. The government maintained that the soldiers and the civilian JTF, as well as the vigilante, will continue to patrol the township and environs until the establishment of super camp there. In Mairoguri, Mohamed Kouni, NTA News. Borno State Government is putting in place short and long-term measures to end perennial flooding at Gamdu village in Kaga local government. Governor Babagana Umara stated this when he paid a sympathy visit to the village following flooding in the, in the community, which submerged hundreds of houses. Here again is Mohamed Guni with more details of the story. This is the second flooding in six days in Gamdu, a community situated about 95 kilometers away from Maiduguri. Some of the causes identified that led to the disaster include four water channels, block culverts, and lack of nearby river to empty water flows from Gamdu and surrounding villages. Governor Babagana Umara, who walked through the township to assess the level of damage, sympathized with the residents over the incident, assuring them of government's intervention to address the challenges and to provide immediate succor to them. Our workers from the Ministry of Reconstruction, Rehabilitation and Resettlement shall be dispatched to this town so that they shall start constructing temporary shelters immediately. After the rainy season, government shall look into the possibility of constructing permanent structures in an essentially flat area where there will be no problems of flooding. 
The governor directed officers of the Ministry of Works and the BOMA to make submission on how best to curtail the perennial flooding in the community and to arrest the situation at hand. Sema Executive Chairman Yabawa Kolo said, no life was lost due to the flooding and that the rapid response team from Sema have provided victims with basic necessities such as food, clothing, and shelter. Community leaders who received the governor on arrival briefed him on the magnitude of damage caused by the flooding in the community and appreciated the governor for his timely intervention. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Maiduguri, Naja'atu in Abuja, has more reports for us on Nationwide. Good afternoon to you. Thank you, Abu Bakr. Nigeria is stepping up information and communication technology in tertiary institutions to catch up with the with developed societies. This is through the intervention of the Tertiary Education Fund, TED Fund, which signed a memorandum of understanding with National Information Technology Development Agency, or NITDA, for intervention in educational development in the area of emerging information technology and digital inclusion. It is the interest of the two organizations to take the tertiary institutions to the higher level to bridge the country's gap in ICT. The National Information Technology Development Agency has been making its presence felt on campuses but requires support from the fund to scale up the impact. This is very strategic and important indeed because no government institution can deliver its mandate alone. I can't even, I don't even want to imagine how our institutions will be today without the intervention of Ted Fund. Abdullahi Musa Suleja reports that key among areas of intervention include infrastructure, human capacity, deployment of emerging technologies, digitization services, and deepening research and development in ICT. First century. And in a knowledge economy era, where if you take a look at the requirements for knowledge economy, believe me, the central vein, yes, if it were a biological system, the central vein, the nerve center, is ICT. It is to that extent, I can assure you, we appreciate the role of ICT and therefore the very important policy and regulatory roles of NIDA. Teams of five personnel from the two organizations have been constituted to drive the implementation of the Memorandum of Understanding. Andy Bado is next in line with Kemi as our guide. Jato and welcome to Ibado. Ogo State Governor Dakbo Apiodu has reaffirmed his determination to continue tapping from the wealth of experience of various elder statesmen who have not only raised the bar high for the state but whose meaningful contribution have united and developed the country. The governor stated this while hosting the Ogun State Elders Consultative Forum in his office in Abeokuta. Lukman Adifeso reports his hair presented. The Ogun State Governor, Prince Dapwa Biodun, described the Ogun State Elders Consultative Forum as a group of individuals with great intellectual powers and integrity whose wealth of experience is irreplaceable and must be properly tapped to maintain the enviable position which Ogun State is now known for. Let me state here that for us as a new administration, as we seek to further unleash the enormous potential of our dear state, and for the successful implementation of our building our future together our agenda, which is our mantra. Chairman of the forum, Prince Paul Ajibola, represented by Olori Yetunde Badebo, expressed satisfaction on steps taken so far by the governor to ensure his campaign promises are met. Those of us who know you know that you are a performer. I believe very strongly that. State the governor of Ogun State hosted the League of Imams and Alphas in Ogun State, led by the chief imam of Egbaland, Alhaji Nadi Onusholu, where the governor appreciated their support right from the campaign period till date. 
The Kwara State Government has donated drugs and beddings to the National Youth Service Corps in the state. This is in fulfillment of Governor Abdurrahman Abdurazak's promise to make the camp habitable for the core members. Kendi Omolosho reports. The items donated include 400 new mattresses, 200 double bunk beds, 90 wooden benches and consumable drugs. Presenting the items on behalf of the governor to the NYC management at the orientation camp, the permanent secretary Minister of sports and youth development, Akambishu Aib, said the development underscores the governor's commitment to the welfare of the people. The welfare of core members posted to Quaras and their stay to ensure that their stay, you know, in Quara State at the camp for three weeks, you know, becomes a better one. It, um, they have a, a shift, a priority shift for what you used to have. Responding, NYC coordinator in the state, Esther Kupolati, commended the state governor for the gesture which is said will support the core members to be more alive in the discharge of their responsibilities. It so goes to show that um, we have a, a governor that is um, proactive. He came, he saw, and he promised some things. And I'm so happy that he has started fulfilling his promises. It will be recalled that Governor Abdurrahman Abdurazak paid an unscheduled visit to the camp a few weeks ago. Kendi Omolosho, NT News. To alleviate pain and ensure free flow of traffic for motorists plying the Abelkuta Lagos Expressway, the Ogun State Government has commenced repair works on all the bad portions on the road. Correspondent Mohammed Adibowali reports that the palliative measure has been carried out at Songwater axis of the stretch. The Abekuta Lagos Express Road has been in a deplorable condition for some time now. Aside being an eyesore, motorists plying especially the Jojuyan and Logbo axis of the stretch have had to go through horrific experience. Some had fallen victim to hoodlums who seized the opportunity presented by the bad state of the road to rob them of their valuables. Daniel Taiwo and Olayemi Joshua plied the road almost on a daily basis. They are excited that the state government has commenced work on the bad portion of the road. There's a bit different, but I'm trying to say that the government has to try more to help us. If a state uh, governor is taking care of this, then I give kudos to him. A visit to the site revealed that boulders, at core, as well as small and big stone bays have been used to fill the bad portions of the road to heal the sufferings of motorists. We discovered that the section of this road, the base is not properly been prepared before. And that's the reason why most of the time we always have a problem here. It will be recalled that recently, Ogun State Governor Prince Dakwabiodu sought the approval of the president to commence rehabilitation work on some federal roads in the state. From Ado Dota, local government area of Ogun State, Mohammed Adibawali, NT News. And that's it from Ibadan Mori Portal Nationwide in Abuja with Najatu after this break. They are there at the crack of dawn. They are there busy preparing while we rise for our day. They are there silently, guarding, waiting, listening, and watching. They are there wrapped in the sky above and the waters below, in the blistering heat of the day, in the dead of night, willing, indefatigable, determined in the defense of the sovereignty of our country. They are our first line of defense and our last. They who have paid the ultimate price in defending us. They are fathers and uncles. They are mothers and sisters and girlfriends and boyfriends. They are brothers and cousins and best friends and neighbors. They are classmates, colleagues and citizens of this nation. They are our defenders and deserve our respect, our prayers, our thoughts. Nigeria, please support our armed forces. You can follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng slash live. Now, you can stay updated on the go, be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad, or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't beat the rich. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA. 
NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. Thanks for being there. Nigeria's beach volleyball players win first match at Africa Games as reported by Amanzi Marcus on Sports Update. The second batch of Team Nigeria's contingent to the African Games in Morocco arrived in Rabat, the Moroccan capital, on Friday morning in a chartered aircraft from the Nnamdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja. 310 athletes and officials were on the flight, with about 200 more expected to travel to Morocco on Wednesday. Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Youth and Sports Development, Olushade Adeshola, disclosed that arrangements had earlier been made to convey the athletes to El Jadida and Casablanca, which are also venues for the 12th African Games. Nigeria will compete in 22 out of the 26 sports at the Games. Meanwhile, the 12th African Games has commenced with Nigeria's men's beach volleyball team defeating Morocco 2-0 in the preliminary round. Ahead of the first national private school sports fiesta scheduled to hold in November in Abuja, the local organizing committee and the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development inspected facilities at the packages A and B sections of the Moshud Abiola National Stadium Abuja. A member of the organizing committee believes grassroots sports development will receive a boost during the games. All the ge six geopolitical zones will congregate here in this national stadium and they slug it out and we have the champion of the champions. In golf, all is now said for an 18-hole pro-arm golf tournament scheduled for Saturday at the IBB International Golf and Country Club Abuja to celebrate the golden jubilee of the first professional lady golfer in Nigeria, Uloma Umboko. Chairman of the organizing committee, who is also the former governor of Inugu State, Okweselia Ziongwodo, at a pre tournament briefing on Thursday in Abuja, said the event is to celebrate the golfer who has represented Nigeria in many golf competitions. With sports update, Amanzi Marcus, NTA News. Officers and men of the Nigerian army have been urged to remain resolute to win the fight against insurgency bedeviling the Northeast. Deputy Theatre Commander Operation Lafia Adoli, Major General Ulushego Adeni, said this during the burial ceremony of Colonel K.E. Elebili and four other officers at Mimalari Military Cantonment Cemetery. Jadwa John Jassini reports. It could be recalled that on the 17th of July 2019, troops of the Nigerian army were attacked by Boko Haram insurgents along Maiduguri Damaturu Road, where heavy casualties were inflicted on the insurgents, making them flee for their lives. Colonel K.E. Elebele, in company of four other officers on special duties in Maiduguri, met their end in that clash with the fleeing terrorists. Having commiserated with the families of the fallen heroes, Deputy Theater Commander Operation Lafia Dole, Major General Olusogun Adeni, enjoined them to take the sad incidents as part of life, as well as pray for the peaceful rest of their loved ones. I want you to know the army is with you. We have our welfare programs and schemes that take care of the children. We will not sleep or rest or give Boko Haram any respite till we return normalcy to the northeast. The deceased were then taken to their final resting place. Flags of honor were then presented to the families, acknowledging the efforts of the supreme sacrifice made to the nation. In Meduguri, Jadwa John Jason, NTA News. And now the weather forecast. And that's a wrap on NCA Nationwide. Join us again at 9 p.m. for the network news.